Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm here to give you my October wrap up. I'm going to talk about all of the books that I read in the month of October. If you're interested in content warnings, they will be in the description box down below for you to check out. And I read these books for Goftober, so if you want to see which prompts from the Angel Board I knocked out with these books, that will also be in the description box down below. But without further ado, let's get down to the books. One of the books that I read this month finally was Bird Box by Josh Malaman. This one is well known because it was adapted into a popular film and it's about this, well it's set in the present day world where this phenomenon happens where people start going crazy and doing very intense and violent and sudden things and the people realize that it's when you look at something so you have to do your best to not look at what is outside and keep your eyes closed if you are outside to protect you from seeing something that will eventually make you turn incredibly violent harm people around you and then harm yourself so that is the apocalyptic horror world that we're in and we're following a main character called Mallory and Mallory happens to be pregnant when all of this is going on. I have to admit I was a bit skeptical starting this, I was wondering how it was going to maintain suspense for such a long book, but my did this book manage to deliver. I think the concept that it's dealing with and the world that it's set in is incredibly horrifying and scary. It's all the more scary because of the fact that you don't ever get to see these creatures, you don't ever get to know what they look like, so I'm not sure how much that horror translates to film, but in terms of the book it was just incredibly putting me on edge all of the time, incredibly suspenseful, and we follow a reasonably short period of time, but it does a good job of building suspense by going between three timelines, where you're in the past when the phenomenon first started happening, where you're in the present day where she's trying to achieve a certain something, but also where you're somewhere in the middle between those two timelines, and you kind of have a hint of what's to come because of the present timeline, but also you don't quite know what's going to happen and I think that just ramped up the suspense all the more and I was just flying through this one, wondering what was happening, wondering if they were going to survive. Horror pregnancies, it's just such a niche thing, but this book pulled it off very very well, which I'm intrigued by because it's written by a male author. It's one that's really out of my comfort zone in the fact that it's not really focusing on a certain theme, it's not really about character development, it's really about the plot, the suspense and the concept, but it does all of those things so incredibly well that it was worth dealing with the shorter sentences that I'm really not used to and things like that. So I'd recommend this one if you want a creepy, spooky read and I'm looking forward to watching the film now and seeing if it can possibly compare. The next book I read was The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood, which I buddy read with Mariana from Mariana Casada. so thank you so much for buddy reading with me. This book wasn't really on my radar before we started, and then BookTube just fell in love with it, and I heard that everybody was loving it, and guess what? I absolutely loved it too. I gave it five stars. This romance was absolutely everything to me. So we're following Olive, who is this postgraduate student and she's into STEM and the sciences so she's trying to find out something and she goes to this school and she ends up in this situation where she goes on a first date with someone, her best friend is really interested in this guy and then she's like I don't want to date him anymore so you can date him but her best friend doesn't want to do that so she ends up fake dating somebody else very spontaneously so that her friend can think that she's over that Boy that she dated only once and she happens to end up in this weird cycle of events fake dating a teacher at the university, a professor I should say. It is absolutely fantastic. First of all let's talk about the romance because this is a romance novel. It is very good at doing the grumpy sunshine dynamic. We've got a very grumpy grump and then we've also got a very sunshiny sunshine that doesn't really tell you anything about those two characters. But I really liked them together. I really like how even though one of them is sunshine it doesn't impact or really change his grumpiness but they gradually open up together and grow together. It's fake dating which is one of my favourite tropes to read about and I feel like the reasons for the fake dating 
and how it came to be was justified and realistic. There was a bit of a meta element because the main character was aware of the concept of fake dating. I wasn't a big fan of that meta element but I didn't mind because the rest of the story was so good. The friendships in this one, she's got two best friends, are imperative to the story. They've got their own things going on, their own romance dramas that they're dealing with but they're also such good and supportive friends and I really like seeing how much the friendship came into play here. There's so many funny and awkward situations that are very entertaining to read about. I also think that even though this one is a romance and it's lighthearted, it does manage to tackle some important topics. Specifically, it looks at being a woman in STEM subjects and how there's just so many men and they're not very considerate of the fact that women are also doing this subject in different ways and the book briefly touches on them as you go along. She's also got a best friend who is a person of colour and she's very vocal about what it's like to be not only a woman but a person of colour woman in STEM which I thought was fascinating to learn a bit more about and see. Even though this is a romance it does have some mentions of the science in it which was very very good. It does steamy scenes so well and so realistically. I really liked how they went. <laughs> I really liked them. I thought they were very very good. There's also some elements to them which some romances don't do very well but this one did very well. I can't say more than that because of the fact that I don't want to give any spoilers. I will read anything more that this author writes. I read The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins and I had an up and down journey with reading this one if you've watched either of my two Goftober vlogs. So in this one we follow these two friends and one of them is moving away from university and the other is going to be staying in her small town and they decide to go on one last camping and hiking trip together to really squeeze out the last moments of their friendship even though neither of them are the camping hiking kind of people. But when they go into the woods things start to go wrong and they might not be the only ones out there. And this was really really good. I have to say you've got to push past the beginning. In the beginning there's quite a lot of expositioning, there's quite a lot of telling instead of showing and I was never quite convinced about their friendship for that reason because most of it is told to you rather than shown to you. But after you get past that beginning, the suspense starts to rise and then it's like reading one of those horror flick films where teenagers go into the woods and camping and things go wrong. And I've never read that in a book before, but this did it very, very well. I was impressed by the fact that it still managed to have a few twists and turns that I wasn't expecting, not particularly wild ones, but when I thought the story was kind of finished and done, it still managed to bring more to the table to make it exciting and continue that momentum. I liked how we get to see these characters together and apart and how their individual developments and storylines echoed each other. I think that worked very well for ramping up the suspense and moving the story forward. It definitely had that creepy atmosphere, that creepy vibe that you want in a horror book and I really really enjoyed it. It did tickle one of my personal gripes about horror and that is when one character has things way worse than the other. So if you're in one person's perspective you'd say the horror level is at 50% but then if you flip to what the other character goes through the horror level is at 100% and I don't know why I find that unfair and I guess that's how life goes but it's one of my personal horror gripes. Other than that though, really recommend this one. It's fun, push past the beginning and you're gonna have a great time. We read Glitterland by Alexis Hall. This is a romance I've read multiple times. Alexis Hall is one of my favorite, if not my favorite romance author. So this was just a reread favorite. In this one, we follow Darian and Ash and they have a romance. Ash is a bipolar, depressive man who is very anxious and at one club he just ends up getting with Darian who is this very typical Essex, very flamboyant man and it's about their romance and kind of making it work when they're both from such different classes, when they both have had such different experiences and expectations from what life has given them and brought their way. And I think it's always interesting rereading things because you see things in a different way and I definitely saw this book differently. In this reread I did not like our main character so much. I really didn't like Ash, I think he's kind of horrible. He puts the grump in grumpy sunshine, I'm telling you, he really does. So I don't know what I would think about this book if I read it for the first time now but seeing as it was a reread I still managed to love it. 
if you want to read this book, you are going to love Darian. He is sunshine, but he is the best kind. He is the rays that you want to have hitting your face in the middle of July. He is a breath of fresh air. He is so genuine. He is so lovely. He is so innocent. And Darian is just one of the best characters. He deserves the world. And I like how this book is unashamedly British. Alexis Hall usually does this with his romances where you've got Darian's Essex accent written into the text so you can just imagine how he's saying everything where you've got cups of tea being poured all over the place where you've got that British sense of self-deprecating humour but also the British sense of being very discreet when you're being mean to each other it's got the culture in there and I really like seeing it I thought it was a very good reread cute romance I loved it. Even though I didn't like Ash as much this time around, I still loved this book. Then I read White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi and I did not like this book, unfortunately. In this one, we follow these pair of twins who live in this kind of sentient, creepy house and we're especially following this main character who has Pika, which is this condition where she does not crave human food. Human food disgusts her and she kind of craves objects. So she likes eating plastic and chalk and things like that. But she is human and it's not giving her sustenance. It did a good job of making me feel off-center because of the fact that seeing her slowly wither away as she fails to eat food was absolutely awful and horrible but it was I guess that's a certain type of horror but at the same time I was just put off by this book because I didn't understand the point the writing style in this one is very strange and weird and sometimes I found it very creative for that fact especially the way she transitions between scenes I thought that was smart but also it means that I was just lost in the words and I couldn't see where the storyline was going. And because I read the whole book, when I got to the end, I was like, what even does that mean? What does this amounted to? I don't really see the point. And a lot of the things that happened seemed to be of no consequence. It didn't seem to add up to anything in the end. So it was just a bit lost in the story, not really liking any particular character, not being gripped by what was happening. The sentient house was there, I didn't see much interest in the sentient house which takes a lot for me because I love the sentient house trope and horror. It just, just wasn't the book for me unfortunately. Then I read a fantastic poetry collection and that is All the Names Given by Raymond Andrebus. New favourite, instant five stars, this was fantastic. So Raymond Andrebus is a Jamaican deaf poet and I mention that because it's a theme in his poems and it really comes across. These ones focus on identity and relationships, but it also focuses on deafness and disability. I, it's always hard reviewing poetry. What I really liked about this one is that it's not chock full of imagery. When I usually read poetry, I love the ones that have lots of images that are very stark, that are very specific, and the collection of all of these images together is what brings you to a conclusion of the poem. You understand the feelings and you understand the message from those images. This is not like that. This one is more straightforward. It's got a more simplistic word choice. It's got more narrative threaded through it but all of that still amounts to the same thing. All of that amounts to giving you a good sense of feeling and a good sense of the understanding of the poem. What sets this poetry collection apart from other poetry collections is his use of closer captions. Yes, closer captions. And in this, it's captions amongst the poetry that are of sounds, but they're not always sounds that you can hear in a certain sense. You've kind of got to read it to understand, but those insertions of the closer captions really worked for the poetry, made the whole collection feel whole and brought it to a sense of, yes, this is about identity. Yes, that is part of his identity. He has elements of his identity that are falling within the Caucasian ethnicity and the black ethnicity, and it's where does he fit amongst all of that which was very interesting to read about as that's not something I personally experience. And then last but not least, I just want to mention the fact that the last section was my absolute favourite. In that section, it's got poems that are inspired by true events to do with ableism and specifically ableism towards deaf people. And some of these situations are ones that I hadn't even imagined or thought about myself because I didn't have the thought that somebody would do that but now I have since learned and it was very emotional and 
yeah, very thought-provoking to read those specific poems. Really recommend this collection. It is so good. I don't know how many people read poetry on booktube, but if you do, pick up all the names given. And then last but not least, I read another poetry collection and that was Bloodshot Monochrome by Patience Agbabi. And this poetry collection was unfortunately not one for me. This poetry collection has poems that are very narrative driven but are very hard hitting narrative driven. It does have very good rhythm and rhyme I would say. Reading these out loud is very very satisfying. I like her use of half rhyme amongst different lines but overall when it comes to the message of the poems it just wasn't really for me. They're quite surface level, they don't really dig deep into the emotion, they're just trying to tell different kinds of stories. The poetry collection lacked a feeling of collection because all of the poems were so random and about different things that it didn't feel very wholesome and in the middle there's a section where she's responding to other people's poetry queries and it just didn't feel like something that needed to particularly be in a poetry collection. But there you have it, those are all the books that I read in the month of October. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you have read any of these books and if not let me know what was your recent read that you finished. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't you forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say, onwards and upwards. Excelsior!